So this time around we want to explore React events and I'm looking at my application right now and as you can see I've changed the application title back to my cool app and we'll make it something more useful before too long. We're just exploring core React functionality right now and this time around what I want to do is add a button right up here and have that button do something when I've clicked on it and just to get things wired up properly what I'm going to do is add a button here, and when I click on it initially, all it's going to do is write something to the console over here. So let's go back to our code, and I'm going to look right now at this, this file, appcontent.js. So first of all, let's put a button in here, and I'll just put a button in, a standard bootstrap button. Button class name equals button, button primary, and we'll put some text in here. We'll call it fetch data because that's what it's going to do before we're done here. And I need to actually have this button wired up to some logic in my React file. So what I'll do is create another function here in my code. So I'll call it fetch list, even though that's not what it's going to do right now. That's what it will do before too long. And I'll use the ES7 syntax to create this, which you'll see all the time. So that's a function, and all it's going to do is console.log I was clicked. Okay, so now how do we connect this function to this button? Well, there's a number of ways of doing it, and the simplest way, and you'll see this a lot, is to use the on click handler, handler with an uppercase C. That's going to be equal to this dot fetch list. And I close it like that. So now if I save that, switch back to my browser you'll see that it's reloaded so I'll click the console and there's our button and when I click on it I get I was clicked over here and that's all there is to it so it's very straightforward of course I actually want to do more than merely write to the console so let's make this a little more complex I'm going to put a horizontal rule in here just to get some space and remember you have to close the tag like that and I'll define below that an unordered list, which I'll call ul, and I'll give it an ID of post list. Doesn't matter what I call it, as long as it has an ID. So that's an empty ul. And what I want to do now is instead of actually just writing I was clicked to the console, I'll delete that. Let's have this function go and grab some data from a remote server in JSON format, and then write that data to the unordered list, one for each entry. Okay, so there's actually a site where I can grab some default data, and it's called jsonplaceholder.typeycode.com. So what I'll do is use the JavaScript fetch function to go to that URL, which is https colon slash slash jsonplaceholder.typeycode.com slash posts. And you can visit that site, and it will explain how it works, but all I'm doing is calling a public API that gives me some dummy data. So we call then in our fetch function, we get our response, which I'm going to convert to response.json. And then JSON is passed to, and I'll open and close my quotes. Inside of that, right now, let's just say console.log JSON, just to see what it looks like. Okay, so I'll save this and I'll switch back to my web browser clear the console, and I'll click the button. There it is. So I got some data back, and you can examine that data, and it's just dummy data, as you can see. All right, perfect. So we've got that data. We know that our fetch is working. Now, instead of just logging it to the console, let's actually get a reference to our section down here, which I called post-list. So I'll say let posts equal document.getElementById and it's called post-list. And now we'll just for each over our JSON. JSON dot for each function. And I'll just call the argument obj for object. And I'll say let li equal document dot create element. And since this is an unordered list, I want to create an li element. Try that again. li. And li will append to the child document.create 
text node. And we want to put obj.title. And post.append child, the li we just created. So if we go back to our web browser, and we fetch the data again, there's all of the titles from our various data that we've pulled from a remote system. And of course, this is the sort of thing we'll be doing later on in the course when we create the go back in to send data back to our React application in the form of JSON. So our response we're getting here has an object with a user ID, an ID, and a title. And that's what we're paying attention to, is the title. So we're grabbing this from each row, if you think of it that way, in our JSON response, paying attention only to the title, creating LI elements for each entry, and writing it to the screen here. Okay, so now we have a way of giving some kind of interactivity to elements on our screen. So in our React application, we have a button. That button has a function associated with it, and we called it using the onClick attribute right here, and just passed it this.fetchList. This is the current class. FetchList is a function in the current class. All right, so that's a good start. Let's move on in the next lecture.